the history of Israel, God's chosen people, is found in the Bible. The history of Israel is recorded in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, and 2 Kings, along with 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles. Here is the history of Israel. Reading the Bible can become very, very confusing. History is not always an easy thing to understand. But remember, this is God's holy word. Jesus taught, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, that when we read the word of God and follow it, we are building our house on solid rock. The Bible is the inspired written word of God, God breathed. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. Paul wrote that when we do spiritual warfare, we need the sword of the Lord. Now, I want to unlock for you the history of Israel in six historical books found in the Old Testament. It's really not that confusing. There's a lot of names and there's a lot of dates. Let me give it to you in a nutshell. About 1,000 years before the birth of Christ, Israel cried out for a king. The first king for Israel will become King Saul. His story is recorded in the book of 1 Samuel. The second king to lead the United Kingdom of Israel was King David. His story is found in 2 Samuel. And then David had a son with Bathsheba, their son's name, King Solomon. He would be the last king of the United Kingdom of Israel. His story found in 1 Kings. Saul David, Solomon, the three most well-known kings of Israel. David will write much of the book of Psalms. King Solomon, known for God's gift in his life of wisdom, will write the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastic, and the Song of Solomon. Tragically, following his leadership, his son, Rehoboam, will not listen to the elders. And the kingdom of Israel is split into two kingdoms, the north and the south. It's all found in 2 Kings. Mostly, it's about the southern kingdom of Israel or Judah. Now, with that said, Reading the history of Israel is as re easy as saying the ABCs. It starts with Saul, David, Solomon, and the divided kingdom of Israel. What can be a little confusing is First and Second Chronicles. And that's the reason why I'm here in my office today and using this whiteboard to help you unlock the history of Israel in the Bible. You see... First Chronicles is a retelling of the story of King David. It begins with the genealogy all the way back, all the way back to Adam and Abraham. The whole genealogy of Israel is found in the first portion of the book of First Chronicles. And then it is the history of of the leadership of David. You cannot fully understand David as a leader until you've read both 1 Chronicles along with 2 Chronicle, uh, along with 2 Samuel. But let me give you a clue about why I enjoy 1 Chronicles so much. It's because 
he is portrayed as the great hero of Israel. David makes many, many mistakes, and you can read about them in 2 Samuel. Not one of those missteps, bad choices, mistakes, is found in 1 Chronicles. He is the hero of Israel. It's all recorded in 1 Chronicles. And then we come to 2 Chronicles. And 2 Chronicles, like 1 Chronicles, is a retelling of of the history. And the same way 2 Samuel tells you the story of David, as does 1 Chronicles, 1 Kings, telling the story of King Solomon, is also recorded in 2 Chronicles. But let me say this. By the time you get to the end of 2 Chronicles, the kingdom of Israel will be divided. The kingdom of Israel will be taken captive. Both the northern and the southern. In 722 BC, the southern kingdom of the divided kingdom is in captivity by the Assyrians. And in 586 BC, the north, the southern kingdom called Judah is taken into captivity by the Babylonians. It's all found here in 2 Chronicles. Today, I want to leave with you a prophetic word found in 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 11. When you die and join your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, one of your sons. I will make his kingdom strong. A word prophetic to King David. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for me, I will secure his throne forever. The word is eternal. You see, Saul, David, Solomon, not one of the kings of the northern kingdom or the southern kingdom will have an eternal kingdom. But God reveals prophetically to us in 1 Chronicles chapter 17 that he will raise a king up that will have an eternal throne. He will come from the seed of King David. I will be his father, and he will be my son. He is speaking of the coming of the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God and who is the Son of Man. I will never take my favor from him as I took it from the one who ruled before you. I will confirm him as king of my house and my kingdom for all time, and his throne will be secure forever. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And it's recorded right here in the history of Israel as David is king of Israel. But there is coming a king. The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is the coming of the king. And the Bible tells us in the book of Revelations, chapter 19 and chapter 20, that Christ will rule the millennium reign of Christ after the great tribulation. Jesus will rule. After the battle of Armageddon, Jesus will rule on earth for 1,000 years. The millennium, the millennium reign of Christ. And one glorious day, there'll be a new heaven and there'll be a new earth and the kingdom of God is forever and ever and ever. And that's the reason why the Bible says he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. That's the reason why we call Christ the Son of God. We call Christ the Son of Man. We call Christ the Messiah. We call Christ our Savior. And yes, we call Jesus the King of Kings. For his kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom forever and ever. 
Father God, we build our lives upon the word of God, the solid rock. Daily, we commit ourselves to reading the Bible, walking in the light, walking in the strength and the faith. For the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Bless your word to our heart this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You be blessed today as you continue reading the word each and every day.